Hey everyone, welcome to Inside Wire. Today we're going to be taking a look at the 16 inch MacBook Pro 2019 model. This machine has been custom configured and can be specced up to be a real powerhouse. Now you're probably wondering why I've decided to buy this now and not wait for the ARM based MacBook Pros. Well stay tuned for this video and in the later part I'll give you some reasons why I decided to buy this now. And there are some questions going around on the internet so I will give you my point on some of those as well. We'll start by unboxing this MacBook Pro and then getting it powered and running some benchmark tests to see how it performs. As I mentioned, this is a custom configured machine. It's a 2.4 i9 8 core processor, 32 gig of RAM, one terabyte SSD and a four gigabyte 5500M graphics card. But just before we get started, be sure to hit that subscribe button and hit the thumbs up if you like the video. So let's take a look. So let's get to it, the moment we've all been waiting for. This is the MacBook Pro 2019 16 inch box. So we can have a bit, we can see there's a picture on the front of the, the MacBook Pro itself. And if we flip it around, Apple have a very minimalist design. They don't have any additional branding on their products. Um, down here you have all your details from the specification to what laptop it is, the model number, serial number, etc. etc. So we'll turn this back over. So they have a little tab in the bottom corner just here. You can pull this off. And from there then you can just rip the seal off around it. So we'll take that off. And they just lift the side of the tab edges up and the box will slowly open itself. And there we have it. So I'll put the box to one side. There's a little tab just here for you to pull your MacBook Pro out. So we'll take that out one second. Just gonna leave this to one side. So this is the charger. This is the USB-C charger. You can see it's got the USB-C on both sides. Um, and that will be used for charging the laptop. There's a document book inside here, so let's take a look. It says, uh, you can read that on there, it says designed by Apple in California. So I think a lot of work goes into Apple's products in terms of their design. So let's have a quick look at what we have inside here, what everything is. So I think that is it inside here. So there's a MacBook Pro book. Um, this basically, I believe, shows you the MacBook Pro itself, what it does, where the touch bar is, the keypad track, how to use it, the menu bar, and just a general overview of the quick OS, uh, OS 10 dock. And on the back, yeah, there's about the touch bar and touch ID. And there's some just additional book in here. And with most Apple MacBook Pro Mac products that you buy, you actually get some really nice stickers to stick somewhere. Um, I wouldn't really recommend sticking these on your Mac. I mean, people do, but I, I would avoid it. Um, I like to keep them in, in pristine condition. So let's move this box out of the way as well. And you have a three pin, UK three pin plug. And that just basically connects into this. So this would, uh, so I'm actually just, just unwrap this right here. So we un unwrap this, take this off, move it out of the way, and it would just clip straight into here. Now, previously Apple used to supply a, an extension lead with this, which used to allow you to plug it into uh, a wall to give you a bit more of a longer lead. However, unfortunately they no longer supply this. You can buy them directly from Apple. Um, I believe they are either either 20 or 30 pounds or something like that anyway. Um, so you can actually buy these directly from Apple if you want a longer extension lead. So that's that. And I don't think there is actually anything else in the box because it's become very light. So you can see it's a very minimal design, it's very simple. So let's remove this box out of the way and bring the MacBook Pro in. 
shot. So you, as I said to you earlier, there's a little tab at the front, which um, gives you easy access to turn it over. So let's turn this over and open it up. I'm sure it's the bit that we've all been waiting for right here. So let's open up this part and we'll take these off. And then that comes straight out. So let's move this out of the way. Turn this over. <clears throat> so just before we open the lid, we can see on the side just here, if you can get that in shot, you have a three and a half mil jack um, for your headphones and two USB sockets on this side. And then on the other side, we have another two USB ports. Uh, so they're USB-C. So if you have any older USBs, um, you would probably have to buy an adapter um, for this to um, work. And then let's open the lid. Oh. So this is a protective cover that comes on the screen to make sure it doesn't get damaged in transit. Um, and you can see with this laptop, it's again very simplistic. You have your big trackpad along here. Um, with all the, the gestures that you're able to do on it. You have a British keyboard layout and your touch bar along here. So let's go ahead and turn this on and run some tests. So we're gonna take a quick look at some benchmark testing. Um, we're gonna be using three different applications. We're gonna be using Nova Bench, Cinebench, and we're gonna be using the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So let's jump straight in. Let's start with the um, Blackmagic Disk Speed Test. So I'm just going to load that up. Give me one second. So let's bring that across onto this screen. So you can see this is the, the design of the interface. It gives you your read speed, write speed, and it shows you what will work and how fast it will be. So let's just run some quick tests. So you're looking at nearly 2,894 megabytes per second write speed and 2,600 megabits per sec megabytes per second read speed. So it shows you all the read and write speeds that uh, what will work and how fast each different one will work. So just keep in mind, just because these speeds are showing up here doesn't mean you're going to get that for every single file. Um, so let's move on to um let's move on to so let's close this down so let's move on to so nova bench on here so let's quickly run this test you can see the specifications of the mac models down here what it is graphics card so let's run that one And as you can see on here, we have the speed test. So you can really hear the fans whirring on this machine at the moment. So it's definitely um, doing some intense work. So we have a CPU score of 1220. We have a RAM score of 297, GPU score 547 and disk speed uh, disk score of 167. So let's view performance charts and comparisons. I like this from Nova Bench because it allows you to view your Nova Bench score and compare keep the result anonymous and compare it against certain machines. So just looking back on here, we can compare this score to a mid-level gaming machine. This machine isn't really decided for, designed for gaming, however, some people do use it for that. Um, but you can see its overall score is 1% lower, 11% higher CPU score and 45% lower GPU score not overly convinced by this one the fact that i'm running some screen recording software in the background may have hindered this result but high-end gaming machine you can see we're a little bit lower uh, a high-end imac again we're a little bit lower however this is probably one of apple's fastest processors out other than the new 13-inch um, MacBook Pros in terms of the MacBook Pro range and then when you compare it to a budget laptop it becomes miles faster um, than what that is so let's minimize this and let's can you bench let's just open that one up bring that one along here i think we can full screen this one as well which is good so here is one i did run earlier without the screen recording software um so that scored 3338 so the cpu is fairly up there 
I mean, there are a few, the AMD Ryzen is slightly, slightly quicker than that. And then you move on to the Xeon processors. So let's run this test and let's see how we get on. So you can see on here while running the um, benchmark tests and having screen recording software, the CPU speed drops down a little bit to 264, 2674. But note the one that I ran before was 3338. So it was a little bit higher in terms of where it ran. So that's it for the uh, benchmark tests. So here are some reasons why I decided not to wait for the ARM-based MacBook Pro. So from what we saw in the WWDC, Apple said they're still going to be releasing some Intel-based products over the coming years. That means the support is going to be there for a coming while and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. We also learned that it, they said that it's going to take them at least two years to complete the transition to ARM. Now what they didn't say is whether it was two years from the WWDC or whether it was two years from when they released the first ARM-based MacBook Pro that has a span of six months. So who knows how long it's gonna take. Another reason is we don't know what the first model is that they're gonna release. Is it gonna be an iMac? Is it gonna be a Mac Mini, a Mac Pro, or even the MacBook Pro? If it is the MacBook Pro, what model is it? How will it be configurable? There are too many questions for me to make that decision initially. And another reason is at this moment in time for me to bring you this great content, my machine just wasn't up to editing the videos anymore. So. I decided to go all out and get myself a MacBook Pro. So one of the hot questions that I think is around and people are asking this a lot is will I be able to run Windows on my Mac? Now for people that purely use OS X, this is no issue for you, you don't really need to worry about Windows, but for people that do live in both worlds, this is a big question for them. Now as it stands, out of the box, any ARM-based MacBook Pros probably won't work on the Windows current version. However, that being said, Microsoft does have an ARM-based OS which runs on the Surface Pro X. So we're gonna to have to wait and see if Microsoft decide to develop this a little bit further or if there are any other virtualization softwares that come about such as Parallels or even VMware Workstation which will be able to handle this. Another thing you're probably seeing a lot about is will ARM outperform Intel on the speed of my machine? Chances are, probably, and looking at the very short glimpses that we saw at the WWDC, it will be quicker. However, until one sits on my desk and I can run some benchmark tests on it, I'm not going to be sure. A side note on this is the ARM-based iPad Pro does run faster than the 13-inch MacBook Pro in both single-core and multi-core benchmark tests. So yes, in most likely in a nutshell, yes, it is going to run a lot quicker. So in my opinion, will I buy an ARM-based MacBook Pro that comes out? Most probably. Are there going to be issues and some compatibilities? Most likely. Apple have given developers time to update the software on the machines to make sure it runs with the ARM-based products. However, there is going to be some issues and as it becomes more mainstream, those issues will be ironed out. I seem to remember some teething issues on the Intel-based products when they first came out, but I cannot wait to get my hands on one of these. If you've got any questions or comments, put them in the section below. I hope you found this video informative and not left you more confused. Remember again, please subscribe to my channel and if you've enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button. I do have some other videos based on tech items, so feel free to check those out. This is Inside Wire and I'll see you in the next one.